sorry, let me start the program. Sorry for just 10 minutes. Half a minute means that I have to move in a corner. I think it's possible to make it. We cannot complete the movie. But the movie is going to continue. Maybe we are going to choose another time to finish it. So, so now, let's go.
Is it about being filled with the Holy Ghost? Is it all about when we 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 we, we just do like this as the humble? What comes to your mind when you hear such things? I want you to take a few seconds and you think, what does that mean? Is it about coming to church? Is it about doing the, the, the thing that you would like to do every day? What is it? In this one, there is worship and there is uh, uh, truth and there is a spirit. If it did not come to be flesh, then it is a problem. Hallelujah. Amen. So obeying the word of God, it is when we worship God in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus says that love your neighbor as you love Jesus. Jesus, when you obey that word, you are worshiping God. The Bible is all about worship through the word of God. Now you become a strong. Hallelujah. Are we okay? Let us go to, to John chapter 4. Verse 21 to 24. John chapter 4. Verses 21 to 24. It says in, in this year, hmm. Woman, Jesus replied, 
Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, mm. neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship that you do not know. We worship that we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and it has come now, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father sees. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we okay? I know we sing. Is it clear? I know what yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, okay. Tell somebody, who said that we are worshiping God in spirit and truth? We are worshiping God in spirit and truth. In this chapter, when as hard Jesus was going to Galilee, but if he did not choose a way of or going through a ship. He thought, he said that he wants to go through Samaria. And through Samaria, he will go on footing. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a plan that God wants to do. He wants to meet a certain Samaritan woman here. Hallelujah. Amen. So the story is more. But when it comes to here, Jesus met everyone near the well. And that mountain called Mount Gerizim. 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 And that mountain, it has been there for long. Samaritans used to worship there. Samaritan is a group of people. Those who are combined between Jews and uh, and Gentiles. Hallelujah. Amen. And that mountain is the same mountain that God commanded Abraham. To go and to go and give sacrifice of Isaac. Hallelujah. Amen. So those people, they believe the real worship is in that mountain. Because their ancestors used to worship there. And Jewish people also the same thing. They thought worshiping in Solomon's temple in Jerusalem, it is the best way of worshiping. Jesus went through Samaria to clarify the things to this woman to be, to be a blessing to his people. To clarify things. Jesus did not only come to, 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 to make uh, us holy before God only. But it is by reconciling also ourselves. That's why he wants to bring, uh, he, he pointed this point out. He wants to go to Samaria. Samaria. So Jesus said, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor Jerusalem. In verse 23 says, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in the truth. Worship in Old Testament, it is all about the place. It is all about we thinking like here is the best place. It is kind of a ritual thing. It was a tradition that we put, then we just come and we say that we are worshiping God here and this is the best place. But now it has created a conflict, has brought this agreement between Jews and Samaritans. 
but in spirit and truth. The kind of worship now, the type of worship has been changed. From our tradition to God's tradition. From our tradition to the kingdom tradition. From our mindset to God's sex. Hallelujah. Are we together? Are we okay? So God is spirit and his worshiper must worship in the spirit and in truth. It is not about the spirit. It is not about the mountain. It is not about the building. It is not about our thoughts. It is not about how we look things. It is not about how we deal with things. But it is in our spirit. For God to communicate to human, it is only through the spirit. Not in your body, but in your spirit, then you will understand, then it will be flushed in you, then you will see a change in your body. That's why Jesus had to come and die on the cross, to allow that, that kind of, of, of worship, the spiritual worship, that it is only through the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to see. Are we okay? So how do you worship God? You cannot say that you are not a born again and you are worshiping God. You cannot say like you are a born again and you don't even read the uh, Bible and you said like you are a born This is where the weakness comes from. We take as we want, we take things as we want. We take things as we are understanding it from our own perspective. In this one, there is three changes I identify our worship. In Romans chapter 12, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, mm. holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to, to the pattern. In the time of the life in Paul, in a police, it is speaking unto the Romans. For those people who are already born again, their spirit has been changed. They are now people of God. They are sons and daughters of God. But it does not mean that they are worshiping God in the spirit and truth. It requires such things for you to reach on worshiping God in the spirit and truth. This, this is where he noted here. That brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. What does the body mean here? Is it the flesh? What does it mean? How do you get it? Hallelujah. Amen. Are we okay? Amen. Amen. When you go to the shop, and you say like you want a bottle of water. With the head, uh, more. You will not say like bottle which contains water. You will not say like bottle which has water. But you say bottle of water. And that person will give you a bottle which has water. So when the Bible says here, Give your bodies as a sacrifice. It does not mean only this flesh. It means whatever contains in that body. Because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
We are three in one. There is body, there is spirit, and there is soul. You cannot just give the flesh and leave the soul. You cannot give the soul and leave the, the flesh and the spirit. You cannot give only the spirit and leave the flesh and the soul. So when it says that like, give your bodies, it means that like, give the combination, which is the body, soul, and the spirit. And you give it to God. Those people that have already accepted Christ, their soul are already saved. But to make their their worship perfect, they need to give their soul and their body and to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we okay? We good? The first point, we have to look righteous. We have to look righteous. This is the first point. Are you righteous? Are you righteous? How comes that you it? It is not something that you put on. It is not a clothes. But it is a gift by God. For those who surrender themselves to Jesus. For those who accepted Christ. From day one you say like Jesus I am for you. The gift of righteousness will automatically uh, take control. Hallelujah. So we have to look righteous. We have to look righteous. It is by giving our bodies. Hallelujah. Are we okay? That's why some people they are in Christ. But when they pass through some people there they want to hold their hands. Or some people they are in Christ. But when they go, you find many people are lasting after them. And they do such funny things. Like <laughs> 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 Or you look pretty. You have a beautiful body. But when the righteousness, the gift of righteousness, to take full control in you, those people, and they will see you righteous. But when we come and do such things, that's why righteousness is a gift. The only way to manifest in our outside look is by, by presenting our bodies. As I told you, the body and spirit is and, 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 and soul. It is not only the flesh. So take care of that. Romans chapter 6, 1920. Paul says, I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. Before we, ac we accept Christ, <inaudible> we were free from the righteousness of God. <inaudible> We've been doing such things <inaudible> with motives, <inaudible> with zeal. <inaudible> we change the way how we worship God. You have to worship God with the same zeal, <inaudible> with the same power that <inaudible> you used to worship other gods. <inaudible> you are now new. You have the gift of the righteousness in you. For an example, Paul used to kill Christians with sin. So when Christ called him, the same sin and the same power, the same energy, the same God. 
Hallelujah. So we have to look righteous. Because the righteousness is a gift in us. Given unto God. I'm saying here our bodies to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. Righteousness is a gift that's being given to a believer. Say to your neighbor that I am righteous. The other thing from from that chapter, from Romans chapter 12, the second point, the way to think and act. Now this change has to happen in our souls. That's why David says here in Psalms chapter 3, verse 1 2. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being. It is not only the body. It is not only the spirit. But it is all in one. It has to be in one line in worship. If you did not reach that, that place, that's when you are not worshiping God in the spirit and truth. Your body, your spirit, and your soul has to come in one line of worship. Some people are finding their flesh happy today. Hallelujah. Amen. So in this work, in this, in, uh, the way we think and act, it falls under the soul. The soul contains our thoughts. And our thoughts are the ones that can either build us, or destroy us. How Hallelujah. If we either build us, or destroy us. So when you give, your, when you give yourself as a living sacrifice, it will give you an ability. The thoughts will not run out. The bad thoughts are there. The good thoughts are there. But when you give your body, you present your body. It will give you an ability to select which one to select. We've been selecting the bad thoughts. Sometimes we select the good thoughts. But it will not say that like you are not righteous. You are righteous. You are righteous. So it will it will take you a moment of 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 presenting your body. Presenting the body and the soul. And the spirit. Then you will be able to control Hallelujah. There is nothing like we just sit and we say like every day we are the same thing. We learn also. You believe or you have to learn. Not the same situation that no. made you fall today no. and make you fall tomorrow. No. Think of that. No one has born like uh, a strong. But the Spirit of God which is in us will make us be strong and make us choose a good, good thought. That's why Jesus says, choose life. But he did, he did not say you must. It is your own choice. Some thoughts will give you options, but will not give you the thing that you have to choose. It is you to choose between all these options. So make sure that you are also worshiping God in your spirit. In your, uh, soul. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 39, verse 9. Joseph said, How can I commit this great sin before God? Joseph was in line with God. And he was a true worshiper. In spirit and in truth. That's why his soul cannot be deceived. There were two 
swords. It was bad and the other one was good. But because the soul is in line with the spirit and the body, the other soul is in line with the spirit and the body. They are really worshiping God. Now the soul is spoke out and it came through the mouth. That how can I commit this great thing? The soul speaks. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not only the spirit of Jamal. Hallelujah. Amen. And it is not only command the body. And it is not only command the soul. They are free to present it. So you think about everything. Are they building you or destroying you? Are they taking you to another level or not? Is it the same sin that you commit and that you commit tomorrow? Hallelujah. So, the, the third point, commend the spirit. This is where you, you commit your spirit to God. Let us please read Luke 46. Luke 23, 46. Yes. It says, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, in your hands I place my spirit. He said this and died. Okay. I want someone also to read for me Psalms 31, verse 1 to 5. Here in Luke 23, verse 46. In a film, Jesus was on the cross. And he says, Father, in your heart I commit my spirit. Then he died. Many of us would think maybe because Jesus is dying. God can never die. God is alive. Allah is alive. But why? He said this. Actually, he quoted this, this verse. From, he quoted this verse. From Psalms 31, from verse 1 to 5. Can you read it? Psalms 31. Says, I come to you, Lord, for protection. Never let me be defeated. You are a righteous God. Save me, I pray. Hear me. Save me now. Be my refuge to protect me. My defense to save me. You are my refuge and defense. Guide me and lead me as you have promised. Keep me safe from the trap that has been set for me. Shelter me from danger. I place myself in your care. You will save me, Lord. You are the faithful God. This is the word. That when he was dying, you shall not bring him to the Father. The Father has said, As of me, so he can't get removed. But the Lord can never be dead. Allah is not going to be removed. God can never be dead. Allah is not going to be removed. Remember Jesus. Gave his body as a sacrifice. The lamb that has been slain. That he gave unto God. Now it is a time to commit this spirit. So that Father, you are my refuge. Father, you are my defense. Father, you are my righteousness. Father, I've completed everything. I submit my soul and my, my body. Now I commit my spirit unto you. This is the third point. Your spirit will be dependent on God. It will only be in the hand of God. Then God will worship himself in your spirit. It is you to make God to worship himself in your spirit. In the spirit and in truth. That's why Jesus said, in your heart I commit 
my spirit. David was not dying. Not so. He was not dying. He was away. He was strong. But why he said that? Because he is giving it all to Jesus. He is giving it all to God. That's what God wants us. If we are worshiping Him, we will not to present our bodies. Your body, soul, and spirit. Then God can glorify Himself in your spirit. And if you are a servant of God, if you are a minister, you will do things that nobody can even believe. You are worshiping God in you see testimony after testimony. No, I'm fighting only in one place. Not just doing the ritual things, but in keep worshiping God in his spirit. Look at yourself. Are you righteous? Are you righteous? How do you think? How do you select the thoughts that comes to your mind? Joseph says, How can I commit this great sin? His soul was activated. We good? Okay. Now when the thoughts come into your mind. Choose wisely. Choose with the spirit. The thoughts, you cannot cast out the, the, the thoughts. Hallelujah. And you, if you have been sinning, it is not the end. God is merciful. They can forgive you and you can start a fresh. You can start something fresh from them. Then you will grow. You will grow in faith. And God will lift you up. We are going to pray. Let us stand up. I want you to see on your spirit. Have you received Jesus Christ? Or you did not, or you have just given it like, or have accepted it is, is just by words. God is saying here, the true a true worshiper will worship me in spirit and truth. So for you to worship God in spirit and truth, you really need to accept Jesus. As your personal servant, you really need to give your spirit unto God and say, God, in thy hand I commit the spirit. Being my refuge, being my righteousness, being my defender, oh God, I commit my spirit unto you. Then after that, you present your body and your soul. Then you will see the mercies of God in your life. You will see the blessings of God in your life. Abraham was, was counted righteous because he, he committed his soul to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we together? If you did not accept Christ in your life, I'm giving you this opportunity. I want you to pray. Say, God, in thy hand I commit my spirit. Maybe you just come to church. You thought maybe you are worshiping God. Maybe you are just like uh, the old people. They worship God in this mountain. And the others worship God in this. And others are thought maybe they are better than that. But God says, like, I am too much concerned about the spirit. Give me your spirit. I want you to, I want to make you righteous. I want you to be a vessel that I can use. I'm just here to remind you and give you a hint of some of those great and amazing things and topics, teachings that will take place that day. Amen. Uh, the hint, the, the hint topics are like this. Uh, we will shall be having four topics of discussion being taken through by different mentors, tutors who are 
servants of God. Amen. Uh, the, uh, our, our conference will cover a topic uh, of relationships that leads to marriage. That's the first topic. And the second, the second topic is we are made for the world. Amen. What are we doing? Are the topics not making sense? <laughs> Give a mighty high claps, hallelujah. Amen. That's something my back. Because this, these topics, we did not pick them from anywhere else. But these are some of the challenges facing us as the youth. Amen. It is not necessarily that the youth of this church, but as youth what? In general. And for this reason, we have to be grateful and happy about some of such things. Amen. Uh, the next topic is the personal relationship with God. Amen. And the fourth topic is how to face the future with fierce confidence. How to what? Face the future with fear. You know? Okay. In history, there is there is where they talk about fear spiders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and the jet, our muscle and lane, our youth, future is the only scenario or the only situation or the only condition whereby we are unable to face it with confidence, isn't it? confident in me in my future I'm going to be rich in my future I'm going to be successful in my future I'm going to have children in my future is there someone who can do that yeah. <laughs> because you have Jesus you have the key but are you sure everyone has it that is why it is one of the topics, amen? Yes. That is why it is one of the topics because we want to speak about it. We want to share the secret, the secrets. The harvest that we are harvesting, we want others to what? To harvest it as well. Amen? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Uh, this conference we are going to we are going to be as the use of this church. It's going to be a combination, let me say that a combination of six different churches that are going to be in this church. And I have made those letters to my secretary and the letters have already gone out today. We are going to have six different churches participating in our church here for the first time in history because I've checked the, 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 the documentary. I've never found this com uh, conference was, was a combination of six churches. So this conference is going to be different yeah. from any other conference. So I want, us to be different. I want us to be unique in this thing. I want us to finish our money first, which is 25K. My secretary has said and the information has said also. 25K we finish with all of us. Then everything is going to be simplified. We want to be ready by by twentieth of this month. Everything is fine. Twentieth of this month. Thank you. We have our facilitators. Demos Stephen is going to come back. Of uh, which some of you already know him. We have Mama Clara. We have uh, Pastor Henry Nogora. I've been seeing yesterday in his home. I was in a meeting with him concerning this uh, conference, and it's going to be here as a story. And also we have uh, our brother Kennedy James, who is going to also be one of the facilitators. That day. So it's going to be a great day. I want us to be example in this thing. As the conference leader, I want us to be example in this thing. Thank you so much. Um, some of you know that we're supposed to finish our movie uh, by 3, from 3.30 to 4. So people who came early, you uh, have the movie. So I just put it like this to let you know that we have already watched it, and here is where we end it. So maybe I'll uh, we'll try to organize next time to come and uh, but thank you for coming today, and thank you, what is it, Brother Levy, for the words, it was so powerful. Thank you guys very much. This is the spirit we want. Every Thursday, we want to see, to see new faces, and then to encourage each other. Uh, I don't know, are there new people here? Yes. Can we see them? By standing up, we want to just clap for you. We have our videos to watch. Uh, Lele Dakani was about the passion of the Christ. So I think you guys can watch it, right? We're not finish it. So next time we'll go, we'll go to the next one and do this. And then our youth program is still welcoming new people. If you feel like you have a talent, like you want to be part of the office, part of the present team, part of Asher, anything, please come. We are not here to serve alone. We are all youths. We have to come and serve all of us. If you feel that you want to be part of us, you can meet Betty, you can meet me, Marlene, anyone. 
will be part of the team or uh, grab it. Thank you once again, and I wish to see you again next week on Thursday. Brother Zamba, you know, sir, we missed you for a long time. Yeah, so we wish to see you this time. So, Beto, the program is back to you. May God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Allah Amen. 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 Means his spirit does not die. Yeah. But he just said that again. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. And death, the old man.